Hello, welcome to the Mark Chenard Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, there is a new Linux distro called Anduino S, right? So uh, in this video, I'm going to provide a overview, a walkthrough, and how you can maximize this new Linux distro so you can get a great experience. So without further ado, let's go into it. We're going dark. So basically, Anduino OS is a custom Ubuntu based Linux distribution designed to help developers and users transition from Windows to Linux by, you know, providing a familiar, you know, interface and, you know, kind of like that, that workflow, right? So that's, that's that. So the key features, right? It's basically a Windows 11 like interface, right? And doing OS uses a heavily customized genome desktop environment style to closely, uh, you know, resemble Windows 11 to, you know, including a centered start button, you know, pinned apps and familiar uh, workflow shortcuts, right? Like the super, you know, plus V for clipboard history. It's Ubuntu based, right? The latest version and doing OS 1.3 is based on Ubuntu 25.04, ensuring compatibility with most Ubuntu packages and benefiting from Ubuntu's ecosystem and updates, right? So it has a compact ISO. The installation image is notably small, about 2.0 you know, gigabytes, making it lightweight and quick to deploy compared to many other full featured distributions, right? It has a flat pack integration, so graphical you know applications are installed via flat pack, keeping them sandboxed from the base system and allowing for fine grained permission control, right? There is no snap support. So unlike Ubuntu, snap support is removed, streamlining the system and reducing background processes. It's privacy focused, right? and doing OS does not track profile or collect user data, emphasizing anonymity and privacy by default. It's open source, you know, distributed under the GPL v3 license and doing OS is fully open source, allowing users to view, modify and redistribute uh, the code freely, freely, right? There are two release branches. You have the LTS, that's a long term support. That's for users needing stability and extended support. There's the standard for those who want the latest features and are using newer hardware. There's, you know, developer and power, you know, like user tools, like, you know, that come pre-configured uh, developer environment, right? So while marketed for developers and doing OS, you know, comes with essential developer tools, but may require users to install some additional packages depending on, you know, their workflow. Now, it has advanced features too, right? It includes support for containers, KVM, virtualization, wine for running Windows applications, and a robust terminal experience. There's system management, right? Which offers tools and documentation for customizing system identifiers, managing storage, updating kernel parameters, and more, right? Now, Discussing performance and usability, it's efficient and fast, right? It's designed for unbeatable performance with minimal bloat. And doing OS runs well, even in virtual machines with modest resources like three gigabytes of RAM. It's user friendly. The genome based interface is tailored for those familiar with Windows, reducing the learning curve and making it easy to get started with complex setups, right? Now there are some limitations. There's no in place upgrades. So currently users cannot upgrade between major versions in place. A fresh installation is required for major updates. It's not yet widely known, right? And doing OS is a newer and less established distribution, not yet ranked among the top Linux distributions on distro watch. Now the typical use cases, it's ideal for windows switchers, especially those whose hardware cannot run Windows 11 or who wish to escape Windows bloat without sacrificing a familiar interface. Uh, it's built for developers seeking privacy. So those who want a developer friendly privacy respecting Linux environment with a Windows like experience, you know, this is probably something that is going to, you know, really be in your wheelhouse, right? Now let's get into a walkthrough session of it, right? Installation. So you're going to want to download and do in OS, obtain the latest ISO from the official website. 
choose between the LTS that's recommended for most users or standard for developers, right? Or enthusiasts. Number two, step two is create a bootable media, right? Use tools like Rufus Windows or Belina Etcher for Linux or Mac OS to write the ISO to a USB drive. Number three, boot and install, right? Boot from the USB drive and follow the graphical installer. So the installer resembles Ubuntu's, but the Windows like theming and terminology. Now the post installation setup is as goes. After installation, consider these recommended, you know, action items. So select the best, you know, app source for your region, install drivers, especially for Wi-Fi, graphics, etc. Mount any secondary disks, right? Then set up your preferred input method and language, update your system and firmware, configure power settings. Now, optionally install an app store or additional applications. Now, in regards to the user interface and experience, it's basically like a Windows like Genome Desktop, right? Is it uses Genome 48 themed to closely resemble Windows 11, including animations and taskbar layout. It has familiar shortcuts such as the again Super Plus V for the clipboard history. There's the system, you know, notifications and UI cues are styled for Windows users. Now the pre-installed tools, you have developer focus tools are included, but you may still need to install some essentials yourself, right? Wine is available for running Windows applications. Package management and software installation are as goals. So, you know, it basically uses app for package management, just like Ubuntu. There's the Flatpak and Flat Hub integration for access to a wide range of applications. Install software via terminal or graphical interface, right? That's the software set center. Now, here's an example. Installing OBS, you know, Studio, right? Peter, please put that code on the screen. The notifications appear for completed tasks, right? Similar to Windows. The system updates, you know, as of version 1.3.1. Updates are handled via a custom command, not standard app upgrade. So to upgrade between point releases like the 1.3 to 1.3.1, you're going to want to run this code. Peter, please put that code on the screen. Now, the major version upgrades are not yet supported via this method. So keep that in mind. Now, the system management and advanced features, it's familiar Linux, you know, concepts as the kernel, processes, files, users, permissions, environmental, you know, or environment variables, the shell, the package managers, system MD, networking, etc. It has advanced features like the containers, KVM virtualization, Wine for Windows apps, RAM disk creation, remote folder, mounting, kernel parameter tuning. Now, it's privacy and open source. So there's no telemetry or user tracking. Privacy is a core design goal. It's fully open source under GPL v3. The source code is available for review and modification. In regards to community and support, there's official documentation and guides that are available online. There are community forums and discussions for troubleshooting and tips. So to get the most out of this Anduin OS, you can optimize both system performance and user experience through several key settings and tweaks. So here are some practical things that you can do to you know get that. You have the CPU performance tuning. So use the CPU power tool to set your CPU governor for maximum performance. So this will keep your CPU running at its highest frequency, which is ideal for demanding tasks, right? Though it may increase power consumption and heat. Peter, please put that quote on the screen for the viewers. So this command sets the CPU to always use its maximum frequency. Now, in regards to power and sleep settings, prevent the system from sleeping or blanking the screen during important tasks, right? Like long downloads, presentations, etc. Disable screen blanking, right? So Peter, please put that quote on the screen for the viewers. So it, you know, prevents system sleep. So to disable all sleep modes system wide, Peter, please put that quote on the screen. These settings ensure your system stays awake and responsive, right? There's the kernel parameter optimization. So for advanced users, editing kernel parameters can further optimize system behavior, right? Like the edit slash you know, etc. slash default slash grub and add desired parameters to, you know, the grub underscore command line underscore, you know, Linux underscore default. For example, Peter, please put that code on the screen for the viewers. 
Now you can update Grub and Reboot. Peter, please put that code on the screen for the viewers. So this allows for fine tuning of memory management, virtualization and CPU frequency scaling, right? Now the user experience enhancements, the Anduin OS is designed to be a you know familiar for Windows users, featuring a Windows-like interface, the Genome 48 and HDR support. So take advantage of built-in shortcuts like the Super Plus V for clipboard history and developer focused tools, including, you know, basically included out of the box. So keep your system updated for the latest performance and security improvements. Now the system requirements for the best performance ensure your hardware meets or exceeds 64 bit CPU, Intel or AMD, minimum of four gigabytes of RAM, but eight gigabytes are recommended, recommended, right? Sufficient storage, you know, space for applications and updates. So that's what I have for you today. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and like button. If you like this video and you gain value from it and you want more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and like button right now. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe and see you on the next video.